I will worship you like I've never worshipped you before in my entire life, Allah. I'm suggesting motives for you, or you can come up with others, and you can put them up and use them as your motive for this Ramadan. Make them something that will motivate you. Or how about this one? No one will beat me to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this Ramadan. The Prophet said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the hadith, show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the best of you. Arullahu min anfusukum khayran. So how? No one will beat me to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at work, in my work, or in my building, or in my neighborhood, or in my country, or in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ummah. Why not? It doesn't matter what kind of sins I did or how far I was. I will beat everyone to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with my heart sincerity and with my keenness to worship him. There's a hadith that says the Prophet sallallahu was telling his companions, on the day of judgment, people will be called on. So whoever prayed will be called from the gate for the praying people. And whoever restrained from himself will be called from the gate for those who restrained themselves. And whoever gave charity will be called upon from the gate for those who gave charity. You know what called upon means? It means that the angel will call you, come here, come, you're with us, come enter from this gate. And whoever fasted will be called upon from the gate of those who fasted, ar -rayan. So Abu Bakr, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him, radiallahu anhu, who was sitting listening to the Prophet sallallahu And look at his will and keenness to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by, by all means. He asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and says, O oh, Prophet of Allah, can someone be called upon from all these gates? So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam smiled and said, Yes, ya Abu Bakr, naam ya Abu Bakr. And I hope you are one of them. Look at Abu Bakr's ambition. He has, he wants to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and please him by Allah all means he wants to fast and restrain himself and give charity he wants to enter from all heavens from all the doors of heaven our only hope to be able to be called upon from all these doors is Ramadan subhanallah we're coming to the last part we said we'll be rewarded six things but what will we do to get these six, six things we can't just expect to get these six things without doing something in return right so we'll say something Ramadan, subhanAllah subhanahu we've been saying like fasting, 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 really fasting, okay? Ramadan is like a medication. Whoever takes this medication comes out at the end of this month as being pious. Min al muttaqin The ayah says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, kutiba alaykum as siyam, kama kutiba ala ladhina min qablikum, la'allakum tattaqoon. O you who believe, fasting is prescribed to you as it was prescribed to those before you, that you may self-restrain or become pious so you fast so that you come out what what's the outcome you become pious the medication is made up from portions with certain proportions six proportions so six things you'll get rewarded and six portions from these medications what are these from this medication what are these six these six when you combine them together you come out being pious we'll write them down and don't forget your reward. We've been saying hadiths and morals and show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the best of you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala min anfuskum khayran. So what are we going to do? Where is the motivation? Okay, what's the first one? The Prophet sallallahu says, number one, the Holy Quran. Al-Quran. What do you intend to do with the Quran this year? Come on, we said we're going to really work. Me and the Quran. What's my plan? Ana wal Quran. Mahi al khutta. And did you ever think who honored who? Was it Ramadan that honored the Quran? Or was it the Qur'an that honored Ramadan? Which came upon the other? Let's think. What is Ramadan without the Qur'an? Shahr Ramadan al-Ladhi unzila fi al-Qur'an. The month of Ramadan in which the Qur'an was sent. So the only reason the month was mentioned was because what? The Qur'an was revealed in it. So we got in the habit of honoring Ramadan and we forgot that it was honored because of what? Because of the Qur'an. So if I fasted Ramadan and did not celebrate the Qur'an, then basically I didn't understand anything. So, how many times will you recite it? Aisha radiallahu anha, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with her, used to recite every day from Fajr to dawn and from Asha to Suhoor. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal used to have four khatmas, so he finished reciting it once a week. Al Imam al Shafi'i said, I don't do anything in Ramadan except feeding the people and reciting the Quran. Al Imam Abu Hanifa would gather his friends and sit and recite together from Fajr to Dhuhr and from Taraweeh prayer to near Suhoor time. Quran, Quran, Quran. So, what will you do with the Quran? 
the sacred land, Mecca, was honored with the Qur'an. The night of power was honored with the Qur'an. And the month of Ramadan was honored because of the Qur'an. So the main thing in Ramadan is the Qur'an. And don't forget, we multiply by 70. And a deed is a stand of its kind. The Prophet ﷺ says, whoever reads a word from Allah's book is rewarded with a good deed. And a good deed is a stand of its kind. And I don't say Alif, Lam, Mim is a letter. But Alif is a letter. Alif un harf and Lam is a letter. Lam un harf and Mim is a letter. Mim un harf. So how many letters are in every goes or chapter in the Quran? Say if you read every day a juz, a chapter, each chapter is approximately 7,000 letters. Multiplied by 10, okay, and then multiplied by 70 equals 4,900,000 deeds. In how long? In an hour. And that's if you're reciting slowly. 4,900,000 deeds. Do you want them or no? If I told you I have $4,900,000 right now, are you going to come and grab them from me or not? And believe me, we're in need for the deeds more than the money, more than anything. We need the deeds. 4,900,000 deeds for reciting one juz or one chapter of Quran that won't take you an hour in Ramadan. How many times are you going to finish reciting the Quran this year? Quran, guys. Number two. The second thing we have to do, the second portion of the medication to become pious, inshallah, giving charity. The Prophet ﷺ was generous, kana jawad, and he was most generous in Ramadan, like a scent wind. And why like the wind? Because it doesn't stop, it keeps blowing, and it doesn't pass over a specific part or an area, but over the entire area. So was the Prophet, so was the Prophet. He gave everyone and he didn't stop. So write down, me and the charity, how much am I going to give? It doesn't have to be a, a whole bunch of money, 50 cents here, 25, whatever you can. Even giving charity, helping out of your, you know, your health or charity, giving a smile to somebody, charity in any, in any form of it. It doesn't have to be just money. So, show the best to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, me and the charity. So number one is me and the Quran. Number two is me and the charity. Number three, kinship or asking about your relatives, Silat al-Rahim. Ask about all your relatives, please, I beg you. The Prophet ﷺ says, mercy does not fall upon people who have no kinship. I beg you. People who don't keep their family relations. I can't. I have to ask about my family. I'll write down everyone's name. And as soon as I finish listening to this lecture, I'll pick up the phone and ask about every one of them. It doesn't matter who is not talking to me. It doesn't matter who is at, at you know, there's issues or family issues. She said that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter... Don't worry what the response will be. Pick up the phone and do what you have to do. Don't, even if the person on the other side hangs up on you, it doesn't matter. I know there's a lot of problems. A lot of families have issues because my mother said this and whose mother said that. Pick up the phone and ask. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy does not fall upon a person who does not keep his kinship. Is it worth it? Pick up the phone and call and ask about your family. Don't worry about what's going to be heard on, on the other side of the phone. And you never know what Allah wa is going to do. Number four, making supplication or dua. And take some advice from me. Write five or six supplications and focus on them the entire month. That's what the companions said. They said we prepared for Ramadan every year special supplications. And we keep begging for them the entire month. And by Allah, wallahi, by Ramadan would be over. And before the following Ramadan would be approached, all our supplications would be granted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just set five or six and keep asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when breaking your fast, during tarawih, during al qiyam the night prayer, or before fajr. Dua, dua, dua. Ana wa dua. Me and the supplication, what am I going to do? This is now coming to the fifth portion of what's coming of the medication to become pious. The fifth one is tarawih prayers. Remember the hadith we said earlier. Whoever prayed at night in the month of Ramadan out of sincere faith and hoping for reward from Allah, then all his previous sins will be forgiven. Don't miss a night. Go pray at the masjid. But I have a child. Try, but I can't. Pray at home. Don't miss it. There's no excuse. Finish a chapter of the Quran daily in your prayer. Look for a masjid that prays tarawih with a chapter or a juz. Me and the prayer. Ana wal qiyam. At tarawih, guys. The sixth portion of the medication to become pious, praying in the masjid. Imagine five prayers. And praying in the masjid, of course, or in jama'ah, is multiplied by 27 of its kind. And then we multiply it by 70, that's 20,000 deeds in one prayer. Multiplied by five prayers, that's 100,000 deeds. Just from praying five times a day in the masjid. 
And as if you just prayed in the haram, the people who are deprived from praying in the haram, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you a gift. I'm not, he's not depriving you from getting the reward of praying in the haram. You'll get the 100,000 deeds while you're praying at your own masjid or mosque or at home in jama'ah. So, six things for six things. Forgiveness. So we said, again, what are we going to say? What are we going to do? We're going to pick up the phone. We're going to call everybody. We're going to tell them what the six rewards are and what the six things we have to do. Phone, mail, text, whatever you can. What are the six rewards? Let's go through them again. Forgiveness of all past sins. Maghfirat al zunub Saving or freeing from hellfire. al min al-nar. Three, supplication is accepted. Dua mustagab. Four, a treasure of good deeds. Kanzun min al-hasanat. Five, the night of power. Laylat al-qadr. Six, Allah is pleased by you. Farhat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bi ibadi. In front of them is what? Our six things. Our six things that we have to do. Quran. Al-Quran. Charity. Uh, uh, charity, um, I'm sorry, charity, kinship, making supplication, tarawih prayers, praying in the masjid. These are the main components in Ramadan, the most important ones. Please, please hold on to it and work hard. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, may He open upon us and give us, bless us with His blessings this month. Let's make dua with our hearts. O oh Allah, please accept us among those whom you accept this Ramadan. Taqabbalna, ya Rabb. O oh Allah, we thank you for the blessing of the holy month of Ramadan. O oh Allah, forgive our sins and our shortcomings. Make us from those who take their book with their right hand. Be easy on us when judging us, O oh Allah. Free us from hellfire this Ramadan. A'tiqna, ya Rabb, had al aam Ya Rabb. O oh Allah, we have raised our hands to you and our eyes have cried for you. We beg you to forgive us our past sins. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we've sinned a lot. And if you don't forgive us, surely we'll be from those who are lost. O oh Allah, you're the most generous. Bestow upon us from your generosity. O oh Allah, guide us and guide the youth for our ummah this year. Ya Rabb, accept our prayers, Ya Rabb. Ya Rabb, Allahumma taqabbal du'a'ana, Ya Rabb. Allahumma taqabbal du'a'ana, Ya Rabb. Allahumma taqabbal du'a'ana, Ya Rabb. Ameen, ameen.